What is going on everybody, Dan with Gear Focus here and we are back with another photography tutorial, more specifically how to get sharp photos every single time. So the first thing that we wanna do regardless of what camera we have is we wanna remember our exposure triangle. And those are your three main settings on your camera, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. Remember to take into account your subject that you are shooting. If it is going to have a lot of movement, you wanna make sure that you have a faster shutter speed. Whereas if you're shooting a still object like architecture or something like that, you might not need to have such a fast shutter speed. Now, while we're on the topic of shutter speeds, for tip number two, I want to talk about what that does at longer focal lengths. When we shoot at longer focal lengths, we are going to have more shake or more movement in our image strictly because of the focal length of the camera. And that's because any movement that you might make with the camera body is exacerbated over that long focal length. Simple physics, right? Build by the science guy. So in order to counteract that movement that we might introduce to the camera, we want to make sure that we have a faster shutter speed. Now jumping over to the gear side of things, let's start talking about your lenses and more specifically the aperture of your lens. Now something you might have heard me say before is that the lowest aperture on your lens isn't always the sharpest. And that's true. Typically when you stop your lens down like one or two stops, that makes you have a sharper image on your lens. If you have an f1.2, like the 50 millimeter that I'm shooting on right now, you might wanna stop down to something like f1.8 or f2, as that will give you a better rendering in your image. Now, another thing with aperture is you wanna remember how that affects your focal plane or how much of your image is in focus. The lower that number, the shallower that plane is going to be. And remember that that issue is compounded when you have longer focal lengths. An f4 at a 24 millimeters is going to be a much wider focal plane than an f4 at 200 millimeters. Now when it comes to actually shooting your photos, tip number four is to shoot in some kind of burst mode. Now the reason we do this is every time that you press your shutter button, you are introducing a little bit of movement to your camera. So if you are pressing and holding that shutter button, you're not going to have as much movement in your camera. Now something for you manual focus users, if you are shooting a bunch of different photos all at one time, you can actually take that focus ring on your lens and move it ever so slightly to rack that focus just so you make sure that you have your subject focused. Most modern cameras have some sort of focus assist built into them, so make sure you go into your camera settings and turn on your focus peaking and your focus assist tools. These are designed specifically to help you get the sharpest image. I do want to mention that you do not have to have the latest and the greatest camera gear in order to get fantastic images. For instance, I've been using this Canon EOS R pretty much since the day that it came out back in 2018. And if you're not a Canon guy, that's totally fine. We have a bunch of different brands over on Gear Focus and make sure you guys are checking back frequently as our listings do change on a daily basis. Now tip number five and my last tip for today is you want to stabilize your camera in some way, shape or form. Now obviously you can use a tripod, but for the most part, you're not gonna be able to move your camera around as freely as you would if you were shooting handheld. If you're shooting handheld, you wanna make sure that you always have at least three points of contact with the camera. Now one thing that you can do, and it actually makes it very easy for carrying, is you can get yourself a neck strap. That neck strap acts as that third point of contact and you can slowly pull it away from your body so that you get tension in that strap and it gives you more stability in your hands. Another thing you can do is you can take the camera and you can use the viewfinder on the top of the camera and press that up against your face and your face acts as that third point of contact. Now the greatest thing about these tips that I've given you is that they are 100% free. You don't have to spend a dime and you can go out there right now and start improving your photography. If you have any additional tips or tricks that you would like to let us know about, go ahead and leave those down in those comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. That stuff really does make a difference to us here on the channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, make sure you stay safe, stay healthy, and remember Gear Focus is always here to help you feed your passion.